Hey guys, hope that you're all doing well and are healthy and your families are all doing fine. So yesterday we started going over your final exam. We went over surface area and volume of prism and of a cylinder. What we're going to go over today is we're going to go over the surface area and the volume of a cone and we're going to go over a sphere as well. So again, it's all for your final exam. We're going to go over one question of each that are going to show up on your final exam today. So the first figure we're going to work with is going to end up being a cone. And again, all of you know what a cone looks like. It's exactly that. Think of an upside down ice cream cone, right? Where the base is a circle. And whenever you're dealing with a circle, you know that the measurement that you're always in need of is a radius, right? So we know that when we're talking about the surface area and the volume, surface area represents what's on the outside of the figure, and the volume represents what's on the inside of the figure. We're gonna calculate both, right? And if you ever need the formulas, they're accessible on Pearson Realize under the formula sheet that I provided. So the first thing, to figure out what the surface area is gonna be, we would use the formula for surface area, right? To figure out how much is on the outside. And it'd be pi r squared plus pi r l, right? So two measurements that we need. One is gonna end up being the radius, the other one's gonna end up being the length, right? So we know that the radius, let's say, it's gonna end up being three meters, right? And then let's say that the length of this cone is gonna end up being six meters. So we have three and we have six. So now before anything else, we can just start labeling them, right? We know that the three represents the radius and we know that the six represents the length because it's how long the cone actually is, how long the side of the cone actually is. So when we're working with this, first thing we can do is just substitute, right? We have pi, we know that the radius is three, Right? We have squared plus, we have pi again. We know again that the radius is three. And we know that the length of the cone is six. So all I did was just substitute the variables that we had, right? Pi came down, radius was three. Squared plus pi came down. We know that the radius again was three. And we know that the length of the cone was six. So once you have this again, you can start dealing with the exponents because you have two parts. So you have the first part here, and we have the second part there. First part, before you multiply, take care of the exponent, right? And whenever you see three squared, it means three times three. Don't make the mistake of doing three times two. Three squared means three times three, and three times three is nine, right? So we have nine. Don't forget the pi there, right? Next part, plus. And when you have all that pi times three times six, and it's all next to each other with no signs in between, just multiply. We know that three times six is 18, right? And then we still have the pi. So again, all I did before dealing with the pi, I did three squared, three times three was nine. Brought down the pi, brought down the plus. Three times six was 18, and I brought down the pi. Because now once you have this, again, to make your lives easier, Instead of dealing with pi, just deal with 3.14. So we have 9 times 3.14 right, plus 18 times 3.14. And again, just to show you guys where all this came from, we had 9, pi was 3.14, we had plus 18, 3.14, right? And now once you have this, again, two parts. You're going to multiply these two since they're next to each other. You're going to multiply those two, right? So first thing we'll do, 9 times 3.14, right? 9 times 3.14 gives us 28.26. Right? We have 28.26 plus, and now we're going to do 18 times 3.14, times 3.14 gives us 56.52. So all I did was, I did 9 times 3.14 to give me 28.26. I brought down the plus sign, and then I did 18 times 3.14 to give us 56.52. And once you have this, it's telling you to add 28.26 with 56.52, which gives us 84.78, right? 84.78. And again, don't forget the units, which is meters. And since we're talking about surface area, we know it's going to be squared, right? 
So in order to find the surface area of a cone, you're going to use the formula pi r squared plus pi rl, substitute the radius and the length, and when you go through the process, you would know that on the outside of this cone, it would be 84.78 meters squared. Since its surface area is squared, it's on the outside. So you're going to have one of these questions on the final. You're going to have another question that's going to ask us to find the volume of the cone, right? Now again, since we're dealing with the cone, the one given is always the radius. We always need a radius. But when it comes to finding the volume of a cone, you're no longer going to need the length, right? Because when we find the volume of the cone, what you care about is the height. And I'll show you what I mean. When we find the volume of the cone, the formula is going to be a third pi r squared h, right? So what we need is the radius, which we have, and we're going to need the height, which we need. And always remember, the height is always a straight line that forms a 90 degree angle. And so for this case, we'll make the height be, let's say that the height is 5 meters, right? Just picking a number. So from that, we have a third pi r squared h, right? And we'll deal with the third then. We know that the radius is 3, and we know that the 5 is the height, right? So before anything else, again, let's just substitute. We have equals, we have the third, we have pi. We know that the radius in this case is 3 again. We have square, and we know that the height is 5. So right now we have that, right? And so we have a third, we have pi. We know that the radius was 3, so we substituted 3. We have a square, and we know that the height was 5, so we substituted that. And before you start multiplying any of this out, my advice to you, always deal with the exponents first. Exponents before multiplication, more of operations. So we'll bring out everything else. We have the third. Okay? We have the pi. We know that 3 squared means 3 times 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. And then we have 5. So all I did in the first step, kept everything the same, just did 3 times 3, 3 squared, which gave us 9. Because now once you come here, again, before you deal with the third, let's take care of multiplying the 9 and the 5 in parentheses, right? So we'll bring down the third, we'll bring down the pi, and we know that 9 times 5 is 45. So all I did in that step again, third stayed the same, pi stayed the same, 9 times 5 was 45. Now, whenever you want to deal with that third, right? if you're thinking about a third, all the third means is you're going to end up dividing by 3, right? So we have, forget the pi, we have a third of 45, right? And if you have a third of 45, what you're going to end up doing, a third of 45 means all you're going to do is 45 divided by 3, right? Because if we're talking, for example, a half of 20, half of 20 is 10, half of 10 is 5. If I'm talking about a half, it's the same thing as dividing by 2, right? Same idea. If I'm talking about a third of 45, it just means I'm going to do 45 divided by 3. And 45 divided by 3 gives us 15, right? So we know that a third of 45, right? A third of 45, 45 divided by 3 gives us 15, right? So again, a third of 45 gave us 15. We have the pi right there, right? Again, all I did, 45 divided by 3, because that's what a third is. 45 divided by 3 was 15. Brought down the pi. And now again, we can substitute this in. Instead of dealing with pi, we can deal with 3.14, right? And once you have that, it's just multiplying. Because all I did was 15 stayed the same. Pi, I wrote 3.14. And now if we multiply 15 times 3.14, 15 times 3.14, it gives us 47.1 meters. And now since we're talking about volume, you need Q, right? So that would be your answer for finding the volume of a cone, 47.1 meters cubed. Cubed again because it's volume. And we're talking about how much space would fit in the inside of that cone. 47.1 meters cubed in that cone. So you're going to have one of these as well. And now the last two questions we'll go over today is going to deal with the sphere. 
And again, when you think of a sphere, you're thinking about a ball all the time, right? And when you're thinking about a ball, you're thinking of something round. The only figures that ever have anything, the only shape, the only measurement that anything round ever has is a radius, right? So we're going to deal with the sphere. You got a sphere. And in dealing with the sphere, again, you're dealing with the ball, right? You have a ball. And since it's not flat, you have some perspective, right? You have some dimension to it. And whenever we're talking about a sphere, a ball, the only thing that we have to work with is always a radius, right? And in this case, let's call the radius again. Let's call the radius in this case, let's say it's four feet, right? Let's say it's four feet. Now, we want to find the radius, we want to find the surface area, I'm sorry. You want to find the surface area and you want to find the volume of this. So to find surface area of a sphere, it's actually very, very simple. It's going to be 4 pi r squared, right? And now the only measurement we have again is the 4. 4 represents our radius. So let's just substitute it. We have equals 4 pi. We know that the radius in this case is 4. And then we have squared, right? So all I did so far was just substitute. We had 4, we had pi, we know that the radius itself was 4, and we have squared. So first step, before we do any multiplication, before we deal with that 4 and that pi, let's take care of the exponent, right? So 4 times 4, we know 4 squared. 4 squared, 4 times 4 means 16. Right? Because 4 squared, 4 times 4, 16, right? Everything else stays the same. Before dealing with pi, now since everything is all together, what we can do is just multiply everything together, right? We can literally do 4 times 16, right? So 4 times 16 was 64. Don't forget the pi right there, right? And again, all I did was I had the 4, I had the 16, everything is together. 4 times 16 gave us 64, brought down the pi. To make our lives easier, instead of dealing with pi, we can deal with 3.14, all right? And once you multiply 64 times 3.14, it's going to give us 64 times, sorry, 64 times 3, 64, sorry, 3.14 gives us 200. 0.96 feet, and then since we're talking about surface area, it's going to be squared, right? So if we're talking about what's on the outside, the surface area of that sphere, it's going to end up being 200.96 feet squared. Again, very simple to find surface area of a sphere. The one that sometimes people get a little freaked out by is finding the volume, just because for the volume, the formula itself can look a little bit complex compared to all the other ones. Again, since we're dealing with the sphere, the only thing that we have is a radius to work with, right? So if we want to find the volume of a sphere, we're going to use the formula, which is going to end up being 4 over 3 pi r cubed, right? And again, 4 over 3, you guys did well with the pi radius to the third. And that's the only thing that some people may have an issue with. But again, we have the radius, so let's just substitute everything we can, right? We have 4 over 3, we have pi, we know that the radius again is 4 to the third, right? And now before again, before you deal with the 4 over 3, before you deal with the pi, let's deal with the 4 to the third. Now what 4 to the third means is you're going to multiply 4 3 times, right? So 4 times 4 times 4, because 4 to the third means you're multiplying 4 3 times. 4 times 4 times 4, right? And if we do that, we know that 4 times 4, right? We know that 4 times 4 is 16. Don't forget that other 4, right? So 4 times 4 was 16. Now we're going to do 16 times 4, which is going to end up giving us 64, right? So we know that 4 to the 3rd is 64. So wherever we see 4 to the 3rd, we know it's going to end up being 64, right? Nothing else changed. We know that pi is still the same, and we know that we still have 4 over 3, right? 
So 4 over 3 stayed the same, pi stayed the same, and 4 to the third, 4 times 4 times 4 is 64, right? So we got the 64 there. And now just to make your lives a lot easier, what I would just say, there's another way to do it, but I don't want to confuse you guys since we're not in class to discuss this. If you have 4 over 3, what we can do is we can just convert everything to decimals, right? So if you were to take 4 over 3, it just means 4 divided by 3, right? And if you do 4 divided by 3, 4 divided by 3, it's going to give us 1.33. My advice, just use two decimals because it makes it more accurate. We have pi. So for pi, we'll use 3.14. And then we have 64 as well, right? So all I did was just convert everything to decimals that I could. 4 divided by 3 was 1.33. Pi was 3.14. 64 stayed the same. And now we can just multiply it. If you want to multiply it all together, you could. If you want to do it part by part, you could. So the first part, we would do 1.33 times 3.14, right? 1.33 times 3.14 gives us 4... 0.18, and the exact number is 4.176, but I just wanted to round to 4.18 to keep it better. So 1.33 times 3.14 gave us 4.18. Can't forget about the 64. And once we multiply that as well, if we now do 4.18, 4.18 times 64, it's going to give us 267.52. And feet, and since we're talking about volume, it's always going to be cubed, right? How much space on the inside is always volume, it's always cubed. So if we're talking about that sphere, we know that the volume, the amount of space inside of that ball, inside of that sphere is 267.52 feet cubed. Again, always remember, surface area is what's on the outside of a figure, volume is always what's on the inside of a figure. Today we found the surface area and volume of a cone end of a sphere. The last review that we have to do tomorrow is going to end up being for the surface area and volume of a pyramid. We'll go over that all quick, but I hope you guys are all doing well. Hope your families are safe and be good guys. Let me know if you need anything.